lovely sunny morning here on Stickle Tarn, so I'm going to be working, doing a bit of work on the cut flower beds. The lilies have now gone over, so I am uh, cutting them back. They go into one bucket uh, to go on the compost heap, and then I'm weeding the beds. There's a lot of weed in here. Uh, that goes into a separate bucket. It doesn't go on the compost heaps at all. Um, the gladiolis are still doing well. Uh, usually I have lots of dahlias out here. Um, but not this year. I haven't got any. There's some more gladiolis over here. So I'm going to cut some of the gladiolis to bring in the house. Get these beds weeded. Now this bed... Um, they look like a, a type of uh, chrysanth looking at the leaves. Um, this bed was uh, little plants that I grew from seed uh, and it was a mixed perennial pack of seeds from Chilton Seeds and as some of them grew I popped them in here and this is what we've we've got so at some point probably Late autumn, I shall move these into uh, a more permanent place. Um, because I was without my raised beds for most of the year, I did uh, use these cut flower beds for growing bits of veg in as well, because I just didn't have the space to grow them. So there's been bits of leeks, there's been a few onions that have been grown from seed. This is some dill, got some spinach there. Um, again, this was young plants. Um, now, I thought this one was labelled up as uh, an osteopanernum, but it's obviously not. So I will have to re-get the packet of seeds out and check. Uh, I might even take a photo of the plant. It's about, hmm, it's about two, nearly three foot tall, and it's got these... Um, these types of leaves, no real smell to it, but these tiny little yellow flowers that the hoverflies and the bees love. And these are supposed to be perennials as well. And the other perennials that came was the, um, it was a lucky dip mix, was the hollyhocks. So I've got all the hollyhocks here. Uh, so they're definitely hollyhocks, but I've got no idea what these are. Some of the other cut flower beds have been. Uh, I put globe artichokes in this one, um, and that it looks like barley and corn, or barley and wheat coming up from the straw that was put in there. I've also got a pumpkin growing in one of the beds, which has sprawled out all over the place. These, this bed. My daughter sent me some seed bombs for Mother's Day, wildflower seed bombs. So I popped them in this bed and we've had a lovely display of uh, wildflowers that the bees have absolutely loved. There's one of our bees. And again, the hoverflies have loved and uh, the bumblebees and that. There's a hoverfly on that one there. Um, but in here, there was also, I was sent a mixed pack of summer bulbs. There was a few poppies as well came up. Uh, a mixed pack of summer bulbs from a company. So they went in here and, um, yeah, there's been a nice uh, mix of bulbs coming up throughout the summer. In here, there is thyme, uh, borage, um this scraggly looking thing here is actually woad and at the back here there is a, a madder plant um, and then it's this is an orange mint which surprisingly all my other mints get covered in bees and butterflies but the orange mint doesn't get the odd one coming to it but not that many this bed has had a few potatoes in it there's another pumpkin over there. I've got a few areas that I use as nursery areas in here to keep plants. And there's 
You see, all of this was sort of put in because I was running out of space. And in here as well, there's a Amelia sinensis. So, um, and there's just sort of lots of pots of things as well, all scattered around. So these beds are all made out of pallet collars, which is uh, quite nice. And this bed here, which was the end of end piece of the raised bed that went all the way along here. Um, it's got a few Jerusalem artichokes in. I'm sort of desperately trying to get them all dug out. Then I've got three more pallet collars that are popped here, which are going to be used for um, growing some more specialist plants. And uh, Martin came home last night and this morning off the lorry he's unloaded some more pallet collars for me. So I've got four to go down to a friend. Um, but there's a, yeah, there's a load of pallet collars there. So I think I've got five. So, and they're just going to make up more beds in the front of the polytunnel and where I think I'm, I'm going to use them. But this area definitely is all going to be come back over to cut flowers. And uh, the other areas I'm planning on having more specialist plants that I can grow on and propagate um, and earn a, a bit of money. So that's the plan. So once I've got this weeded, I've started weeding this one, then I'm going to top it up with some alpaca poo. I've got a load of grass cuttings that were um, they've been left to dry out. They've been turned and dried and turned and dried. Uh, so they're going to go on top. And then I've also got a bit of lime to put in the beds because we've got a lot of creeping buttercup. Um, and I'm deadheading so once the flowers have died back, or the lilies have died back, then the whole bed will be covered with um, a membrane and be left over winter. Um, but I want to pick up some more lilies. I've lost a lot of lilies in this bed and sort of in this area of this bed as well. Uh, I've seen a lot of chafer grubs in there. So... Yeah, so I need to replenish some of my lilies. Lilies is my favourite flower, that's the one I love. And the same as I've lost my little rose bushes from over there. So I need to seriously sort of try and get on top of things. Um, right, so, so that's about it. Um, but this time next year it will be a blaze of colour once again. Today I want to get some um, tomatoes canned up. I'm going to make them into a basic sauce. So I'm down here in the polytunnel and I'm going to harvest all the ripe tomatoes. All the tomatoes all the way up there. And then I can um, start the, the canning process. Just come out to feed the chickens and I can hear a distressed call of one of the big little kids and I think one of them is stuck in the fence so let me put my bucket down here and go and uh, rescue the little fella He's obviously been sticking his head where he shouldn't have been. And then at that age. <laughs> and it's not you. <laughs> Come on, mate. Yeah, it's a brother that's stuck. Come on.
Don't struggle. If you struggle, you'll just make it worse. Oh. There you go, you're free. <laughs> and everybody else has come to see what all the noise was about. <laughs> now he's having a stress wee. His little toggles. <laughs> Just stay out of the fencing, it won't happen. Right. I don't think you're any the worse for wear, are you? No. Yeah. I'm going back to feeding the chickens and uh, don't chew my fingers now. Okay. Say hello to the people. Hello. hello, socks. Hello, socks. She says hello, everybody. Right. Let me go then, and I'll bring you some dinner in a minute. Okay. Right, the uh, chickens have just been left out, so I just want to show you. You see this chicken here? She's got hardly any feathers on her back. Um, that's because Daniel, who is there, he's still growing his tail feathers back after the molt, uh, obviously favours that one chicken. This can happen, and you can see it also. I'll put a bit more feed down to get a bit closer. just under the edge of her wings. I'm going to try and get round to the other side. Just under the edge of her... Where's she gone? There she is. Just under the edge of her wings as well. Um, and this is because Daniel spurs when he mounts her. Um, and of course he's holding on to do the business and he's um, ripping some of her feathers out so the solution is is to make her a, um, a little coat which is called a chicken saddle and so that's my job for today to make her a chicken saddle and tonight once they're roosting I'll be able to grab hold of her and put the little saddle on well, Miss Scraggy over there, she's got her um, saddle on. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, hello. Her other wing is sitting underneath it instead of on top, but she'll sort that out. She's only got a little bit of a flap. So, but there we go, that gives her a, a bit of protection on her back. And. Um, and this morning is actually a bit of a cold wind, so um, she might be grateful for a little bit of clothes. So, um, but yeah, that will keep Boyo there from uh, tearing her apart. And there he is, still growing his tail feathers. And there is one of his sons. Um, he looks like he's gonna look very, very much like his dad. I think that's the only cockerel we've got from the last hatch, so that'll be quite good. Right, time to go and get everybody else fed. <laughs> 